my name is Yanis, but everybody knows me as Yanu Ninja. I am 31 years old and I am based in Paris. I'm from the Paris Podium scene, but aside I am working as a professional dancer. I'm mostly working with dance companies and spontaneously I can be part of like fashion shows and like jobs related to the mainstream industry. Um, yeah, I'm mostly judging both nowadays, but I've been actively working in Europe and also outside of Europe um, in different ballroom scenes in the world in the old way category. Since last year, I got deemed legendary in my community, which now made me think, okay, I would like my category to be more known, more popular. So yeah, nowadays I'm mostly and actively teaching so I can see like a new generation of old way walkers all around the world. Well, when I started old way, it literally just was me being curious because I was already being trained, like intensely trained in other dance styles as like hip hop, house dance, popping, locking, um, yeah, house dance was probably one of my favorite styles, if not my favorite. So I used to go club a lot. And uh, during 2012, we had, we had um, that thing called uh, Manif Pour Tous. So for a bit of context, France was about to make homosexual marriage legal in the country, but we had a lot of people Manif protesting against our rights to marry each other. So they decided to call this movement Manif Pour Tous, which if I translate is protest for everybody, which was almost like ironical because uh, they think, oh, because anyone can marry anyone. Well, you know what? We're all gonna protest because we can all do that anyway. Uh, so I started to go actively in the clubs and I've met La Sandra Ninja, which is the European trailblazer of the ballroom scene. Uh, it was just someone I bumped into and I was like, oh, what is it? Oh, voguing. I kind of know what it is because uh, Vogue Evolution on MTV, America's Best Dance Crew, that's it. I just added her on Facebook and I went to a ball really long time ago. But in the meantime, I started to realize that I always was surrounded by straight people that in my dance school, which was a street dance school, I also was only surrounded with straight people and that I kind of was reduced to my sexuality. Even if I would ask like, oh, how can I make that better? They would say, oh, but you know, hip hop is not a gay thing instead of giving me technical uh, advices. So on the long run, I started to think, you know what? Maybe I should just take a voguing class. So I took Vogue Femmes, so not even old way. And I got to a ball because I was curious. And it's during the ball that I've seen old way for the first time. And I've realized, oh, like, it's kind of cute. And you know, I can pop, I can do lines, I can do spins, I can go on the floor. Maybe it would be interesting for me to start doing old way. And I just did it because I wanted to experiment and have my little thing on the side. And that little thing actually had lots of potential. So I kept going and pushing until that I started to win in Paris, until I started to win abroad. And like all of a sudden I, I loved old way. In popping, I used to love when people were making lines and angles, but in house dance, I used to love to go to the floor and do like small transitions between my posings. Um, it reminds me also of the spins and the flow and the grace from jazz. So all these things, I saw that I could make them happen in my old way performance. So it has been my background and my inspiration into my performance. When I started to learn old way, um, it actually just was super short. Like La Sandra Ninja is walking Vogue Femme. All my sisters in Paris were walking Vogue Femme. Um, 
I think the first time I walked all the way was, yeah, obviously October 2013. But my first all the way class was in May 2014. So I like, uh, yeah, it took a lot of, lot of time. But in the meantime, I already started to like develop what I've learned in Vogue Femme, which is how to do a spin and dip, how to do a catwalk, how to do a duck walk. And then in the meantime, with my background in popping, my background in breaking, my background in uh, jazz, and also like the few stuff I've learned while doing Tai Chi when I was younger, I was like, okay, well, this is gonna be your performance and try to be creative and make your own moves. And in the meantime, break it with like elements from Vogue Femme that you're not gonna do very, um, very calm. So instead of doing bim, bim, I would just do boom, boom. And in the meantime, try to create. So maybe I would do a pose and then I would start to boom, 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 to develop into like, oh, I can use my popping, but at the same time I'm doing a pose and I'm just turning, turning, like if I was on a carousel, then maybe I would spin and then I would be on the floor, but instead of just doing a dip, I would keep spinning on the floor and then find the transition and then boom. So yeah, that's how I started to, to learn all the way. I've just started to create and make my own stuff. Well, all the way is basically how you're gonna name the performance from back in the days. That's why you vogue the old way. If I look at how it has evolved and how voguing looks like nowadays, you can definitely tell that uh, it has been following the pop culture, it has been following different music trends, even like um, aesthetic, aesthetic uh, evolution. I would always uh, explain that Old Way is just like butch queen performance, female figure performance, tracks performance, whatever, but performance in late 70s, 80s, when it was just performance. Uh, because the female figures will always make these movements in a more county way it started to be a category by itself. And then the butch queens would want to vogue the same way. So they would open butch queen voguing like a femme queen. It became a big key. Everybody wanted to do this category. So it became butch queen vogue femme. And now everybody wants to do vogue femme because it's more fun, uh, because the beat is a bit more like catchy. And it has been so much evolving that now there is almost like a formula in the performance when you know that you just have to catch it and you can get the whole room with you for the dip. But as the old way performance, I will always uh, refer to elements such as catwalks, such as duck walks, uh, spin and dip, floor performance, posing, some of these elements being taken in Vogue Femme for like a perfect sort of performance. But we also have different sort of um, arms control as well, hands, blah, blah, blah. But we also have uh, different inspirations, such as um, military choreography for the male figures. We also have like all the commercials. We also have like the big movements inspired by Elvin LA for the spins, uh, for the floor. We also have like strong uh, elements of posing coming from the cover magazines. We also have like the influence of the hip hop community when you see the pops, when you see the freezes on the floor during the posing. So yeah, we have a lot of, diff uh, I'm surely forgetting some, but we have lots, lots, lots of different inspirations mixed with elements and then you can make it your own. So when people talk about Old Way and they say, Old Way is lines and you have to be butch, bitch you don't know what you're talking about because you can also be super smooth and just doing waves um, you can make your whole performance while being feminine and it will still be old way um, to me this is just like grace precision and style done with all the things that are previously um, uh, announced is it an english word great but 
back in the days, like this was not the formula to get the grand prize. You had to be empowering yourself and be beautiful and all in your performance refers to something graceful and precise and just making the crowd wowing. This sort of like reaction, I see it happening mostly in the classic performance categories like new and old way. I kind of see it sometimes disappearing and what I wish with the old way performers nowadays is to not necessarily just be doing lines and a boring spin leading to a basic and even more boring dip, but to really emphasize it, to really live it. Because when I do old way, especially in the beginning, my whole point was to just be the one. Just someone that you will remember, but to be the one you will remember because, oh, he was so different. I know that it's what was happening back in the days. With all the old way performance we have nowadays, I can tell just with my little fingers how much are interesting to watch nowadays. And I wish like people would not just be doing what worked before and they're gonna do it again, but really what make them special with what they can do with the elements. So for instance, if you look at Europe, I can look at Diva Miyaki Mugler. She has the references from before, but she also does her. And that's what makes her performance unique. Same with Caroline Milan, um, another female figure, but she will do some like breakdance stuff with high heels. This is innovative and it's still old way, but it's a new version of old way. And I just wish to see more people in our category making new things while still applying the old rules of the category. But yeah, I, many people think that we cannot create anymore in old way because it's an old category and that we should only do what has been done and that if we create, it can be messy or like not appropriate for the category. But as long as you have grace, precision and style and that you really have the elements in between, to me this is still old way, but like your old way. I think we can definitely see Europe as a sort of like small America. But like America, you know that New York is the Mecca and then you have different scenes here and there, some bigger than others. And it's the same in Europe, like I think Paris is like definitely the Mecca, but then you can go to London, you can go to Amsterdam, you can go to Berlin, blah, blah, so many different cities with different cultures, which makes it more interesting. But also some scenes definitely have, because of the trailblazers, they have uh, some people more focused into some categories. Uh, if you go to London, New Way is a very hot category, which is not the case in Paris. Uh, so we have small differences here and there, like arms control is a big category. Um, if you go to Russia, I'm going to consider it that Russia is part of Europe. Um, but this is going to be an empty category. Um, I don't know, like in Stockholm. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, what is interesting, I think our scene is more inclusive, like we had a lot of debates about it, but we have categories for gender non conforming people. We do have maybe a more body positive mindset when it comes to category like sex heron or body. It's another debate as well. Some people would say we have to do it like America do because it's an American culture. Some people would say, um, but actually, we are in Europe, so maybe we can also apply to uh, European standards. So it's 50-50. I always try to see what is fair, what works. I want to go with the flow of like how it is, but also how we do in our own way. I know in America, the butch queens don't wear high heels for European runway, but in Europe they do. Now we have icons, now we have legends. So I think we're definitely a big and confirmed scene despite all the dramas we have and people boycotting each other's balls we're still uh, an exciting scene to go 
refreshing, creative, innovative. We always have moments happening during the big balls. Don't forget I'm doing mine on the 16th of March in Paris. It's gonna be a beautiful weekend. Yeah, I actually went to see the scene three times in America. And any time I went there, I felt I'm privileged to be from Paris, I'm privileged to be from Europe. We have lots of help or at least sponsors because we, especially Paris, are a, scene, a city that loves to support art. I don't think right now is the best moment for trans rights. And on the other hand, it's also the moment for a lot of people to contribute to help the queer community. So we do have like this very extreme um, situation in which like people are being killed and because of that more people want to be helpful towards our community. So yeah, it's a rainbow of different opinions, but most of all, like I really love to be part of the European volume scene and I'm very proud to be from this scene and even more proud knowing I'm from Paris and even happier knowing that the scene is so big nowadays. I could not even count how many we are now just in Paris, but like Europe, yeah, it's, being developed in countries like we would never expect to have a ballroom scene and I've been judging to so many countries, some in which now um, our rights are not on the best uh, terms. Like I'm thinking about Poland, I'm thinking about Hungary, I'm thinking about the Balkan countries and maybe nowadays going to a ball is not just because you want to have a safe space but it's also like a protest against what is happening with the government. When I went to Russia, when I went to Hungary, when I went to Poland, even Belarus, like to see so many drags or butch queens wearing high heels, smoking in front of the venue, I'm thinking, okay, what we do is definitely political. Um, and same when you go into countries with a strong colonization history. When I go to Portugal, when I go to the United Kingdom or like Germany and seeing all these black people reappropriating um, the narrative of their bodies. I'm like, okay, great. We're going the right way. Like I should not read the comment section on Instagram because sometimes it's going wild with how the society is going, but what we do is great. In Paris and in the rest of Europe, sometimes you just have a ball because the person wanted to organize a ball and that's it. You have in Paris some people that do a ball every year, like we have Vini Revlon, legendary, legendary Vini Revlon, uh, organizing a ball every last Saturday of October, um, the Halloween ball, but before it was named the Africa Ball. Please, it's not a shade if I forgot. Um, but I, I don't think there are other annual balls in Paris. I know we just had the ELB by Legendary KD, but it's not going to be an annual thing. Um, I know that if you go to Milan, there is the Scandalous Ball happening every last Saturday of November. If you go to Greece, there is a ball every first Saturday of July. Bitch, how do I know all that? But we, we have some balls happening annually, but it's not really a thing. You know, first weekend of May, it's in Portugal, organized by Mother Nala Revlon. So that depends. Um, there is the Black Pride Ball happening every September, but this year is going to be November and that's happening in Amsterdam. So it always depends, depending on people's wallets, because most people, they pay it from their own pocket. Legendary Charlie Gauthier Brown organized some of the biggest balls in Paris. So usually uh, people go on a Facebook group called uh, European Ballroom and there is a calendar. But what happens is that sometimes you have four balls the same day in four different countries. So it all depends. Just check the Facebook group. I think at this point in Paris, you 
definitely have multiple options to be part of the scene. The first one is having friends, being already part of the scene and asking them, oh, I want to learn. Can you invite me to your practice? So you can start with a friend because a friend is already part of the scene. I know some ninjas in Paris. They became ninjas because they were already closed with some ninjas and they wanted to come to the practice session just to see how it goes and if it would work for them into some categories. Some others, they start by going to classes because they saw it passing by on Instagram or because they asked to some friends like, oh, I want to learn voguing, but I know nobody from the scene. So because of people giving workshops, um, I'm one of them, uh, they will come to the class and get interested. And so because they get surrounded with people being already part of the scene or like baby voguers, they will come to the events and then they will start walking. You also have the third option, which is a bit more unusual, but it's basically just come to a ball and chat with the people around and be like, um, I want to be part of it. <laughs> and when they befriend some people, well, they get invited to the sessions or they can take classes if they want. I know that this op this one option is not so casual because usually when you go to a ball, you already know some people. Uh, but it already happened that some people were like just alone and on the long run, they start chatting with people and then they end up like, you know, following each other on Instagram and boom, it's a community thing. So I don't think you can just take classes and arrive at a ball and impress everybody. You have to be part of like, this community thing, not necessarily going to the class, but literally just going to the balls because there is a, an atmosphere that you have to rely on. You cannot just arrive in the back of the runway and be like five, six, seven, eight, and just like in the studio, you, you are that girl at the moment you step in the building. When you get your tense, it's not just like, oh, thank you. It's like, you're still in the, in the vibe, still in the mood. And yeah, so usually people enter the scene in Paris because they're already like in touch with the people from the scene. And then the more they participate, the more they are being seen and the more they are being seen and the more like, you know, okay, she's one of the girls. And once you start getting the trophies, they call you for the LSS and now you, you start being a star. The smallest amount of participants regarding the performance categories in Paris at the moment is New Way. New Way, we had such a strong beginning because we had Mary Ninja uh, being the first one from France to win at the Latex Bowl. Uh, New Way category three times in a row but she lived in America for like many, many years and no one was in Paris to like spread the information. The category is kind of dead, except when we're having big major balls and that we have the internationals coming over. We have a few new way people starting to walk, but is it hot at the moment? Not yet. Uh, all the way was almost like following the same way until I started to teach old way and the beginning has been slow because like you cannot take one class and be like I'm gonna walk this category it's many 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 if not almost everybody that take my class have no dance background no dance experience but the time passed and the more started to walk and now they start winning and they travel and they they have their journey. So now all the way is like on the right way and it's gonna be even better and better um, this year. We even have like the Baby Vogue category being divided in two now. So the Baby Vogue fans and the Baby Old Way. This was one of the things I promised myself when I started to get bored with Old Way is that, okay, well now I need to just spread a legacy and just have a new generation of people walking all the way. Still needs some, some, let's say, still needs some 
um, some push. How could I say that? Still need, it's not perfect, but definitely on the right way. Well, in order to have a category being more popular, you have to inspire the others and make them think, oh, I want to do the same. That's how I started to work the category. I liked what I saw, but my strong ego was also thinking, oh, I can do that, but I can also do it better. Then after that, you need someone that can guide you. Luckily, I already had so much background that I could just help myself and La Sandra was kind of, you know, giving advices. Then they need some extra help, not necessarily by taking classes, but literally just having like um, a sort of communication with someone who is experienced. Now I help a lot of people that send me videos on Instagram and WhatsApp. Um, so I can, I can see what is good, I can see what they can work on. So yeah, and on the long run, the category is becoming hot. I don't like it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, just starting uh, with the most obvious thing. I love Korea. I love South Korea. I was there last year and I loved the country so much that I felt, okay, I'm gonna come back, like kind of soon. But I also was very surprised to see during the Kiki that I was judging that actually the level is pretty high. Or um, at least it got high quickly because I do remember that there was like almost nothing just a few years ago. Um, how did it get good that fast? I don't know if it's COVID, I don't know if it's the kimchi, I don't know if it's like um, just because of the culture, because I know you guys have amazing and very strong whacking dancers, popping dancers, uh, hip hop dancers, b-boys. Maybe it's the K-pop in uh, impact, like people like to learn choreography, but they also like to freestyle. I don't know if it's the way people work here, but the Korean volume scene has been evolving so fast that I was in Japan last week <laughs> and we were talking about that, like how there can be so much people walking balls and with a good level so quickly. So yeah, like first of all, my opinion about the Korean volume scene is quite good. Now what I want to see more is people being less shy. I think it's also because of the Korean culture in which like you have to respect people, know the boundaries and not overstep. But ballroom is also a space in which you reappropriate the space and reappropriate like um, your identity, your um, the way you look at yourself. So I saw a lot of people walk looking down. I saw a lot of people like hesitating to come on stage and be like, no, no, you. Bitch, in Paris, you don't have this moment of, you go, no, you go. It's like you push the other, that's your moment. So I wish I can see more of this. I also would love to see like the realness category evolving, but I think it's an important category um, because uh, I know you have femme queens, I know you have twisters, or at least like Korean twisters. I don't think you have tug realness yet. I know realness is not like an exciting category for some because people like to see runway, they like to see performance, but that's also like the roots of ballroom. So yeah, uh, I, I wish I can see more realness in the future. And also um, more, um, more exciting outfits, especially for the fashion categories. I know it's not a thing in Asia, but I'm from Paris. So I know that even for a mini ball, some people are gonna bring it. So yeah, these are the three things I wish that. Next time I'm in Korea, uh, I don't know who's gonna invite me, but I, I wish I can see this progress. Well, what I always suggest, it can be to my ninjas in Paris as it's to strangers, but support your scene. 
support your scene, work the mini balls, work the functions, work the big major balls. Like you have to make your experience and you have to see also what's your identity. Working a ball can be stressful because of the adrenaline, because of the MC, improvising chants, because of the crowd, maybe chanting for your concurrent. Um, the outfits, maybe some style works better with your uh, dance than others. I know me personally, I hate, 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 hate dancing with like long coats because I do a lot of flow. So then I get my feet into it, into my outfit. So I know I hate that. I hate hats. I go, I love floor performance. So if I have a hat, then it falls and it stays somewhere on the floor. It's not cute. I like when the outfits stay the same from the beginning till the end. So yeah, to make their experience in their scene so they know what works. And then they should travel. Uh, because the situation in Korea is not the same as in Paris. In Paris, you can take a flix, but you can take like a very cheap bus and go to Amsterdam, to London, to Berlin, to so many different cities. Uh, well, in South Korea, you're kind of stuck. It's otherwise the sea, otherwise North Korea. So I would suggest people to smartly make decisions about where they want to invest their money to travel. They can go to the Japan ballroom scene, they can go to the Chinese one, they can go to Taiwan, they can go to Hong Kong, Philippines, Taiwan, and now you have the choice in Asia. So otherwise here, or maybe they can challenge themselves and go to America or Europe. If you want to go to Europe, I would suggest to do like a sort of two weeks, three weeks experience. So they don't just go to Paris and then they go back to Seoul. They go to Paris and then we have a lot of events in Europe. So maybe they come to Paris and then the next week they are in Germany. Or maybe they go to, to, to Sweden or Italy or Spain, but they try to smartly make like a calendar of all the places they can go to Europe. And yeah, so they have different experiences, not just the Paris one, which is usually full of stress, but they can have maybe a smaller ball somewhere in Spain, Portugal, Norway, and then they go to the big one in Paris the next week, and then maybe they can go to another one, maybe Amsterdam, maybe London, maybe Milan. And yeah, so they have a lot of like experience, but also a community experience because you cannot just go to a ball, walk the category and leave. You go to the ball, you talk with people, you chat with people, you meet people, you make new friends, you get new inspiration and you must to do that by communicating and living the experience with the others because there is only one winner in the category. Maybe you're gonna lose, but if you make friends, you chat with people, you feel good, like meeting all these people, then the experience is all worth it because yeah, you are with your people. This is legendary European prince, Yanu Ninja. And I'm giving a shout out to the House of Kitsch, to the Korean ballroom scene, and to UUL Kitsch.